welcome, welcome. Plebeians, aristocrats, holy men, mythological creatures alike. To the second episode of the Panther Time Podcast. Your host, Justinian Mason, is here to shift the paradigm as he speaks on these relevant topics in today's world. His goal is to shift the perspectives of your feeble minds. Speaking on everything from culture, comics, yes, even cannabis. We will peel back the layers. of the onion that is our society. So tune in. Grab your wine. Grab your ale. Because it's fucking panther time. y'all special episode supposed to be live from mount olympus but i either got some wrong directions or i don't know what happened i was going up and the next thing i know is it's kind of hot and, and lobby down here so we're live from hades with an olympic update an olympic update on the 2021 olympic games I don't know if y'all watched it. If y'all listened to the first episode, you knew I was going to watch it. You knew I had to talk about it. Love the Olympics. I mean, from the moment the theme song goes on, shout out to John Williams, bringing y'all facts early. John Williams, the, the Star Wars composer, he actually composed and produced the second half of the Olympic song, the, the past the da, 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 like all the Star Wars he sound and shit. Like, of course, that was John Williams. But anyway, once you hear the John Williams, you know you're in for a good time. So here for a quick recap for those who are interested in in the drama from the Olympic Games, who made it out, who got gold, who lost, who cried besides me. Maybe a little bit of the juiciness. But yeah, this is definitely interesting Olympic Games. Interesting Olympic Games. I mean, delayed a year. All of the signage. Everything on TV kept saying 2020 Olympics, even though it's 2021. I know they're trying to keep things on schedule because it's every four years. But, I mean, you could have just called it the 2021 Olympics. We would have been fine. Like, we know. We all experience the same thing. But, yeah, I mean, the first thing you notice on anything you watch, if you're able to find a way to stream it, like if you're not a cable person, if you're just a streaming person, and you just assume that the NBC streaming app, Peacock, would have the coverage, seeing as how they're running the Olympic streaming and coverage. But, no, Peacock's useless. But if you found a way to do it, if you found a way to watch it, First thing you notice were empty stands, like huge, beautiful fucking stadiums. No people. They started to allow some people like near the end, like fellow athletes, um, yeah, competitors who were there, coaches. I think they were letting like attendees and workers um, attend as time was going. Everyone was getting tested, like the craziest testing protocols. Um, And they set up a crazy amount of robots for like the whole thing, like. This was supposed to be such a fire Olympics, like in Japan, the year 2020, like the future is now Olympics. Like Goku was a special ambassador for the fucking Olympics. The mascots for the Olympics were two little robots that moved around and could communicate with people. 
Like, it's not super cool stuff, but empty stadiums for the most part. Um, shout out to Japan because they actually went to great lengths to try their best to use as much recycled materials as possible um, in anything they could. So if you notice some of the stadium seats were like all different colors, like brown and weird greens, things like that, like recycled material kind of colors, uh, they were able to pull that off. So despite the giant cost that <laughs> there is to make these stadiums and make the Olympics happen, for there to be no people, yeah, it sucks, but at least they use recycled materials. Shout out to them. But the games were crazy. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot on the line, obviously. I mean, people train their entire lives for this event. It's every four years, so there's no guarantee. I mean, especially nowadays, there's no guarantee if you make if you don't make it to one that you'll ever make it again. Um, if you do make it to one, then once again, you'll ever make it again. So every event, every moment is is just so dire, so dr- drastic. It's crazy. It's so fun. But it's beautiful, such a beautiful event. Um, track and field, is, it seems, is you know such a big focus. I feel like the focus events are obviously track, gymnastics, and swimming. Um, beach volleyball, they love to show. It's like the only time you'll ever see volleyball on TV. Um, you get to see all the cool sports. But it's crazy that you know some of the new sports that were updated this year were surfing, which was nuts because there was a typhoon going on, and they kept it going because typhoons apparently create great waves, which kind of makes sense, but is freaking ridiculous. But surfing, they added rock climbing, which was nuts. They added skateboarding, which was insane. Um, you know, some disappointment from the U.S. Um, L.A. guy. Which, I mean, I call him an L.A. guy, but his story, um, Nija, uh, I think Nija Johnson, his story was nuts. His story is absolutely nuts. Um, really lived like a Rastafarian lifestyle, kind of led by his father. His mother did some things to get them away from that um, and, and kind of help uh, <laughs> let them live a normal life. But by then, I mean, I think he won his first skateboard competition at like 10 years old. Um, but this kid's crushing it. Um, long story short, skateboarding was nuts. And the woman skateboarding specifically, I, like all the medalists were teenagers. Like I think one of them 13 years old. It's nuts, like throwing themselves off 12 flights of stairs with a piece of wood under their feet. Um, really cool stuff. Such cool stuff for some little kids. I think Japan won gold in, in both skateboardings, which was tough, which was super tough. Um, Tough isn't cool for, for weirdos who don't know what that is. I don't know. I just thought, <laughs> felt the need to explain that to some of y'all. But, yeah, skateboarding, super dope. But y'all know I was there for the track. Y'all know I was there for the track. This was a crazy track meet. Probably the craziest track meet of all time. Like, the Olympics at the end of the day is, like, the closest thing we'll get to like any sort of like true anime type tournament. Like we have people from all over the world representing their country for pride, for glory, for all sorts of shit. Like, especially in a place like United States and really everywhere in the world now, it was crazy to see. And it was so clear to see that black people, brown people are everywhere. We are the majority um, I think that's a popular term that's going out there. People of like the world majority or whatever people are saying. But like no matter where you looked, there was black excellence in this Olympics. Not just from the US, but whether it's a German woman, <laughs> a German black woman winning the long jump to an Italian dude named Marcel Jacobs winning the hundred. It was everywhere. Any Caribbean person you saw on the track was dark skin. Like anywhere you looked, it was apparent that we're everywhere. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I love to see it. Um, that's, you know, from here, you don't get that perspective. All you're hearing is, oh, you know, they're tearing down Shakiri. They're trying to make different ways to stop black people from being excellent. But like if it wasn't for black and brown people, 
And if you think about just indigenous and add Asian people to that, like the Olympics would literally not be able to happen. They would not be able to happen. It's not. So you look at, ooh, one of the favorite things I saw in the Olympics was rugby, the rugby sevens. Crazy sport. Crazy sport. Played football most of my life. Do not want to play rugby. I've got visible injuries lingering from football. And, man, those dudes are brick shit houses just running through each other um, with no fear. No fear. No remorse. Just no regard for the other team's life, sanity, or family. It's great. But these dudes from Fiji, which completely redefined, like, what I thought Fiji was or, like, where I thought Fiji was. But these dudes from Fiji all look like freaking Fashion Nova model dudes in the face. But are all, like, 6'2", like, 240 and faster than I ever could be is nuts. It's ridiculous. All dark skin, but like from Fiji, like two of them had like weird Luigi mustaches. Like it was really crazy. Like I've never seen anything like it. But they were raw shit. Raw shit. And it's nuts because COVID has obviously been a thing that really impacted a lot of people. That was a recurring theme throughout the broadcast was telling the stories of all the people who had been impacted throughout COVID, whether it's not being able to train, not being able to work outside of training, not being able to travel and compete. But for some people, like the individuals from Fiji, it's such a small island that can get decimated by a pandemic like this. Some of these guys haven't seen their family in six months. Some of these guys moved to Japan knowing they were going to compete in the Olympic Games. And they wanted a place to be able to travel. They wanted to get acclimated. They wanted to be able to be there. Some of these guys literally traveled on shipping barges with fish and shit because they couldn't get flights between Japan and Fiji because of the pandemic. Like, Stuff like that. They showed a video of them singing a victory song after they won gold. And it's like, these dudes are pouring their hearts out into this Fijian, I'm sure that's how you say it, Fijian song. It's nuts. It's beautiful. But black excellence everywhere you look. Um, it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Like the United States, <laughs> well, there's the 400-meter hurdler, I think the last Olympics he competed for one of the Caribbean islands, but now he's a citizen, competes here. The guy in the 5,000 who came third, he's clearly African, competed here. A thing Mu who won the 800, family immigrated from Sudan. And it's interesting because, you know, a lot of these people are from other places. And I always thought if I ever had the opportunity to compete in the Olympics, I'd have to get three because I'd have to represent Barbados once. I'd have to represent Puerto Rico once. And if I get a third chance, sure, I'll give the U.S. some love. Um, But it's crazy to see, not crazy, but it's interesting to see how passionate people are about being able to compete for the United States. Like that's really like the cherry on top of the journey that like, yes, I made this, I immigrated here made it through everything that immigrants go through. And now I'm at the top of this pinnacle as an American, like wearing these colors, wearing this, waving this flag, like nothing better than rocking the best jersey. Nothing better than rocking the best jersey in in all aspects of like how that phrase goes. <laughs> but it was great. It was great to see. So many interesting things to see. So many interesting things to see. Ooh, mental health was a big issue. Not a big issue, but a big topic. Big, big topic in these Olympics. Obviously, Simone Biles and getting the twisties, which I've, you know, no one no one's ever heard of the twisties outside of the gymnastics community and maybe the the extreme sports community, diving community. But the twisties. Ooh. That's some scary shit to think about. Like You're spinning in the air, especially her doing stuff that no one's ever done before. 
and you all of a sudden can't see, you all of a sudden lose your balance, lose your equilibrium. Oof. That's that's some scary stuff. And for her to be 20 some years old, you know, 10 years older than some of these Chinese Olympians she's competing against, she probably had a thought after like the second or third time where she was like, yo, I almost broke my neck. Like, why the fuck am I out here doing this? I'm paid. My endorsements monies are chilling. Got a great boyfriend and he's chilling in the NFL. Like, she could go do book tours the rest of her life. She doesn't need to be jumping doing backflips. She's a champion of all champions to be able to come back after that. Not just after that experience, but the all the bullshit she went through throughout the week. Social media, people saying this, saying that, just having to tune into that. Luckily, the time difference and being in Japan and being locked in that community uh, of the Olympics helps out. But, man, to come back from that is is a powerful, powerful thing. Uh, she really does cement herself as as one of the GOATs with that. Because uh, GOATs is, is, is a big mental thing. Not everyone is built for it. I'd say the, the contrary to her example is, I feel bad for her, love her to death, is Naomi Osaka. Um, you know, for I'll say this, like she's, yeah, she beat Serena Williams once, maybe twice, who knows, but she's, she's not a goat. She's not Serena Williams level. She's not Simone Biles level. Um, well, she's very young, so we'll see if she gets there, but she very quickly got elevated for a couple of reasons, for a couple of different reasons, beating Serena, being Haitian and Japanese leading up to the Tokyo Olympics. Like her past like four years of life has been nuts, like dating a popular rapper. But oof, all the pressure that that young lady had on her shoulders. I mean, talk about shoulders. Simone Biles is literally built for it. Serena Williams is literally built for it. LeBron is literally built for it. She doesn't have the shoulders for it. Do not have the shoulders for it. So it's interesting to see because Simone Biles, you know, she does a sport like gymnastics, which is so low key. People don't really care unless it's Olympics time. Like, yeah, she has her endorsements, but she's low key. Versus Naomi got cover of Sports Illustrated swimsuit, dropping swimsuit lines, got a documentary on Netflix. Like, that's a lot of stuff. Torchbearer for Japan, the host country, like that's a lot of pressure, a lot of stuff going on. Ooh, COVID. And she's carrying the torch in a way for Black Lives Matter and black women as a Japanese woman. Tough, tough. I feel bad for her. But yeah, it's it's you really have to have steel nerves to be an elite athlete. Like it's not for everyone. Um, I mean, greatness isn't for everyone. Anyone's ever read Steve Jobs' book or just pays attention to some of these guys like Elon Musk? Um, anyone who like I feel like those guys are definitely extreme examples, but like even a Mark Cuban, I mean, he's another billionaire, but like, I mean, look at any billionaire. <laughs> um, and kind of look how they operate. Look at their reserve resolve. That resolve is, is, is everything. That resolve will, will have you survive some fights in an anime or two. But, yeah, it was it was interesting to see different athletes, different moments, different ages, different countries, just to, to measure their resolve in the Olympics and see how people reacted. You know, you, you see some of the Americans getting third, getting second. If you think about getting third or second in the Olympics, getting top eight in the Olympics, like, is crazy is nuts you're one of the top eight people at a thing in the world that's nuts and yes you don't lose like you don't get gold and some of these people were devastated devastated absolutely devastated 
And what's funny in a sport like track, like everything's numbers. Lay down the numbers, everyone's best time. Y- reality, you should have been a tenth or eleventh. You ran two two personal bests in in the in the rounds before the finals to even be here. So you should just be happy to be here and find find the blessings in that. Um, but that's not how, that's not how most people operate. But you have people devastated. It's like, yo, just look at look at this moment. You're top eight in the world, and on paper, you were never gonna beat this guy. You're never gonna beat the top four guys unless you literally broke your physical boundaries on some Goku Ultra Instinct, Ultra Instinct shit, or two or three times in a 48 minute fight that lasted 60 episodes. Look into that, people. But yeah, you see some of these Americans like, man, really, really distraught about getting third or second in the Olympics. In some of these other countries, it's 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 life changing in so many ways. So many ways. They're so grateful. They're so grateful to be there. But there's a couple reasons for it. There's a couple reasons for it. Most people don't realize that Olympians I mean, you don't get paid to be an Olympian. Like these, a lot of these sports, like it's not football. Yeah, it's not football. Yeah, there's basketball in there, there's baseball in there, but it's not the MLB or NBA. So, like, most of these people aren't getting paid big bucks or they're playing, you know, niche sports. So, you get paid. You get paid. Uh, they're playing niche sports. And you don't get paid by, like, the Olympic Committee. So governments actually try to support athletes. Some of these small, small places, like you're getting a mil, half a mil, quarter mil for, like, bronze, silver, gold. Here in the United States, it's recently been increased. So you get a gold, you get, like, 37.5. Like, I think silver, you get 25 and bronze, you get 15. And recently, I think they recently, recently changed it up until like 2018. That shit was taxed too. Um, and up until 2018, it was lower than that. So up until 2018, around that time, you got like 25K for a first, yeah, for first place in the Olympics. Which, you know, understandably, we just got, th- we're, I think at this point, we have 38 gold. So, that's that's a decent amount of money to shell out, um, but man, you're training four years for one moment. Some of these athletes to be an elite athlete at that level, like you're spending. Th- I mean, LeBron spends a million plus on his body a year, so you're you're it's crazy. It's nuts. It's nuts. But the level of gratitude, you know, I, I'd understand if if this was difference in a in in a check, shit, I'd be upset too. I'd be, I take back everything I just said. <laughs> I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. But you know, in the moment, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna be grateful. I was still on TV. You know, you're gonna get the endorsements. You're gonna get all of that stuff. Um, but it, it all comes with age too. It all comes with age. Like Allison Felix. You know, shout out to her. Most track medals of any Olympian. She tied Carl Lewis getting bronze um, in the 400. And then U.S. swept the 4 by 4 came back with some redemption on the relays. And now she's got the most medals by an, Olympia, uh, by an American Olympian. So, you know, her moment's different. She's coming back after so much. She's in her mid thirties as a woman who just not just had a baby, but recently had a baby and had so many struggles with that as a black woman, that entire experience, like to even be here is not. So her moment's different. So it's all about like the, the, the moment, like all about perspective. But I think one of the best moments I saw by far was the high jump, the high jump where the guys share the gold um, these guys are like great friends. They've been comp- com- these guys are great friends. They've been competing against each other for a while. 
get the opportunity to share a moment, share a gold medal. Um, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. It could have not have been a dry eye in the house. But, yeah, so much dope stuff. So much dope stuff going on. Um, oof. World, world records drop in. That, both hurdles races were nuts. Like, the fact that people are running this fast with hurdles in front, like, I need to see Carson Warhol. That's not even his name, Carson Warhol. Um, but definitely Sydney McLaughlin. Like, I need to see you in the open 400. Like, fuck those hurdles. Like, it's, it's getting nuts. People are running fast as hell. People are jumping far as shit. Like, are we just going to keep getting faster as as humans? Are we just going to keep getting more athletic? Because in all sports, it's happening. Like, you got dudes like KD who are six foot 13, but are bringing the ball down the court and can shoot from anywhere. Dudes like Aaron Donald in the NFL, Lamar Jackson. I don't even know what he is. Patrick Mahomes, but then still Tom Brady. Like, it's like people are, it's next level. Yeah, if people keep evolving, like, hopefully our sports will have to evolve. Olympic sports, like track and, and gymnastics, like, that stuff will stay the same. Like, we're always going to want to see who's the fastest, who can do the most flips. But stuff like football is going to have to evolve. Like, if people are running under 10 seconds, consistently in playing NFL football, like that's too dangerous. People are going to die. People are going to explode. People are literally going to explode on impact. Have to take the kickoff out. Can't touch someone if they're running past like 20 yards down the field because that's just too much speed on the field running that fast. It's nuts. But if these sports keep evolving, who knows what we'll have. I really just want some form of like ultimate tournament of just not even fighting, just the ultimate skills. Like I want to see the greatest break dancer fight, the greatest MMA dude. But it's also a cooking show. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah, so, I mean, as as sports evolve, as the Olympics evolve, I'd say, I mean, we're definitely in good hands. It's crazy. Sidney McLaughlin is, what, 20, 21 years old. Um, all those skateboarders were teenagers. Typical stuff with gymnastics, a bunch of teenagers. We had a bunch of teenagers in swimming. So sports are in good hands. It's, it's going to be really cool to see what this next generation of athletes can do because they're already just tearing down records, which is why I, I personally think we need to stop calling people goats because, like, greatest of all time is, is just really just ignorant to say. Like, world records break. Like, we just saw a bunch of world records break. We constantly see it. Tom, People like Tom Brady, like, are, are outliers like LeBron is an outlier, Jordan's an outlier in certain time in certain cases, but even them, like we really need to see them in every time to tell. But like records always get broken in 20 years, there's going to be people who are doing things that we've never even imagined in sports. So to claim someone now is the goat, that's that's foolish. There's too many variants out there that can do cool shit. So, so yeah, sports sports is in great hands. Um, I mean, the world is definitely caught up to the U.S. The world's definitely caught up to the U.S. Um, like, when it comes to major sports, but just sports in general, like, no other country spends as much time, energy, or, like, thought Um collectively you know into sports as like the united states like from an early early age and it's not even just like it's not even just for people who are like truly passionate or like even have a chance to be an elite athlete it's like for anyone any schmuck who wants to play soccer u.s is going to find a way you know to have a select soccer team for them to play on if they can pay but there's countries where, I mean, 
Namibia, for example, just that doesn't even sound like a real place. But they had two young ladies who honestly got robbed of probably some more metals because they tested too high for testosterone. I'm not even going to touch that or go too far into that. But these two young ladies running fast as hell. This one young lady is like, I think, 17, 18 years old. Running form is horrible. Literally doesn't even know how to run. She's just sprinting her for her life. It's crazy to watch. Next Olympics, she's going to win probably the two and four. And if she goes down, she's going to run the 100 and probably win that uh, if she learns how to run. But, like, the world's caught up because technology gives you access to training. You can hop on YouTube and see anything. And time's a weird thing these days. We've, we've got more time than ever. we got more time than ever, even, still, even though we still got 24. Maybe it's because the 24 was made up. But the world is catching up to the United States. We're still going to do our thing because we're we're still going to be the ultimate melting pot. We'll have to see. But it, it'll be interesting to see um, what some of these Asian countries do as they grow just from a, just from a size and, like, amount of people. Like, yeah, size and, like, population standpoint. Um, it's like a pure numbers game. Like you're bound to have someone who's a fucking like freak athlete. <laughs> um, so the more sports, the more sports open up to people in those countries, it's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be nuts. You're gonna have people coming out the woodwork. Um, best high jumper in the world from fucking Qatar. Um, mentioned those young ladies from Namibia. I heard, you know, I mentioned Fiji. There are a bunch of other countries that I heard of for the first time in my life during these Olympics. So the representation's pretty nuts. There's actually an entire team that's just for refugees, um, which is crazy. That just popped in my head. I had to mention. But, yeah, there's an entire... Um, team of Olympians that's comprised of refugees that like there's a whole committee, Olympic committee, a bunch of countries get together um, and help support these athletes who show promise. Um, but stuff like that's, that's, I mean, it's beautiful. Like to think refugees are able to compete in the Olympics. Like sports is, sports is spreading, spreading so wide. Like 86 different countries found a way to medal during these Olympics, 86. And I'm scrolling through this list and shout out to Puerto Rico. Got one medal. Jasmine Camacho Quinn, BR Bodiqua, 100 meter hurdles. Got that Olympic record as well. Damn, I wonder if Barbados got any medals. We might not have. We had some people running around, but that's the beauty of the Caribbean. Like, Bahamas was balling, and their colors are pretty damn similar, and the letters. So I'm claiming both of those 400 meter um, records. I saw some white lady. I'm pretty sure won like the triathlon or the marathon for Bermuda, and I think it was their first medal in the Olympics, like first gold medal. So I'm claiming that if a white lady is winning something for Bermuda, that's that that counts for Barbados. I don't give a fuck. Uh, transitive property of colonization. That medal counts for us. But representation is huge out here in these Olympics. It's only going to keep on growing. And it'll be crazy to see, you know, skateboarding was as surfing was adding, added. It'll be really crazy to see if they end up adding like esports. If they add esports or video games, it's nuts. US probably won't win any medals in that anytime soon. But, woo, truly. And that that makes that makes the Olympics intergalactic, intergalactic. With the Olympics phasing out, closing ceremonies going on, maybe as we speak with this fucking time difference, which is not has not been easy to watch these Olympics games. 
Um, cast on the prime time and all that's been cool. But like I literally wake up to all of the results and spoilers. It's been kind of whack. But as they close down, you know, it'll be it'll be cool to see how they evolve. I think Paris is 2024. And then LA's 2028. That's going to be here before we know it. It's going to be here before we know it. I could not, for the life of me, tell you a damn thing that's going to happen between now and then. My third eye used to be pretty good. I think it has glaucoma these days because I can't see shit. But we'll see. Those are going to be some entertaining games. That's for sure. Hopefully, Japan finds a way to not have the same mistakes as Beijing or Rio with the aftermath of just the facilities and everything that goes on there. But I, I trust that Jap- I trust Japan can find a way to do something good with all that stuff. But yeah, it's been a fun game. It's been a very entertaining games. You know, got kind of two weeks of distraction of a crazy athletic event that is really wild. They were able to make that happen. So smart of them to have no fans and limit a lot of the athletes. Like the moment you were done, you're you're getting out there for the most part. But yeah, nice little two week kind of distraction and a bit from all the, all the usual stuff that's going on around us. Yeah, football's up next, but we'll see how that goes because none of those niggas want to get vaccinated. So, I mean, it's going to be a bunch of, well, I was going to say a bunch of white offensive linemen, but a lot of those dudes are MAGA, so they might not be getting vaccinated. So, yeah, we'll really see about this NFL season. It's going to be fun. Well, Thank you for tuning in to this JSBN special edition episode of the Panther Time podcast, giving you a recap of the 28th Olympiad live from the depths of Hades. It's quite hot down here, folks. It's quite hot down here, but it's been great. It's been great chatting some sports with y'all, giving y'all a rundown, talk some track goss. feel like I just talked to my dad for a little bit. But, yeah, we'll do some of these quick little snippet episodes, single subject, single frame of mind, just to catch up on what's recent, what's relevant as it's in the moment. But I got to go. I got to get back to Hades here, Uh, you know, helping this guy Zagreus escape. Keeps turning left when I tell him to turn right, but I'll keep training him up and Maybe I'll see y'all on the other side. Till next time, y'all. Panther out.